Hello, this is your host Tom from MagnaCAD, and I thought I'd do a little something different. Uh, in the previous video, we showed you how to do a milled pocket in uh, Innovate um, in innovative mode. Okay, this one we're going to do the same pocket but in structured part mode in IronCAD. Okay, uh, so let's get started. So, what I first did is I went to our structured part mode tab make sure we're working in a structured part mode all right let's click this so we're in structured part mode and then I drag the shape in and you can see the icon gear icon indicates we're working in a structured part mode and I like to refer to this mode as SOLIDWORKS mode or inventor mode because it basically works the same way although IronCAD has a lot of added benefits to it the basis of it pretty much works the same way we have your bodies and stuff like that <clears throat> not really a fan of this mode but it you know for some customers there may be a need for it so that's why I'm showing it um, all right so what uh, we're gonna do is that milled pocket again in structured part mode so once we have the shape dragged in we want to right click on it and set as active so now and we can hide these planes we don't really need those just hide them so now everything we do will only affect this one part okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a cut feature right to the center of this part it's it's uh, important to know if you drag to the center or not okay so if you drag to uh, not the center of the part and you reshape the part the pocket doesn't move with it okay but in structured part mode it automatically will set various typical constraints so if you snap right to that center point when you get the green dot IronCAD naturally assumes you want to keep that shape centered so it will always keep it in the center of that face okay just thing to note I don't particularly want that I might want to move it around at a later date so I'm just going to drag it not on the center point. Okay. So once you have that, it's very easy. We come to a pocket, right? You can use drag and drop again like you would. You can enter the sizes here as you would, you would want normally. And in this case, uh, we wanted to constrain those uh, drilled holes to each corner. In structure part, this is a nice thing about structure part is is if you go to your tools option and go to your uh, custom hole and drag right to the corner. Oops, let's exit because you see how it's orientated. I want to look more down at the part. Do that. So we drag it again to that corner. Go to our hole. Let's make it a big hole so we can see it. V shaped. See, it. okay. The nice part about it is automatically constrained again in structured part mode. It works off of key points. So when you, and I'm just going to drag this hole into this uh, catalog temporarily because I don't want to have to redo the hole. So in structured part mode, when you drag on key points, okay, it automatically creates a constraint. So when we did this and placed all the holes right on those key points, it automatically is constrained. So it saves you the the um, the task of going in and constraining each hole manually, like you do in innovative mode. So that's pretty much it. The pocket there. The only difference now you have is these are all independent holes. So if you want to change the size, they're not linked and unfortunately you can't link them in structured part mode that I'm aware of if I happen to come across a trick I will certainly pass it along but just wanted to show you the two different approaches from innovative to structured part mode all right so whichever you prefer now you got to remember in structured part mode you're you're working like you would in any traditional model so if we come into this hole or let's say uh, we drag a feature in here just to, to, to 
give you an understanding like right here all right just dragged another block right so let's say we want to use the edge of this block to drive the geometry of this first block so when we go into this geometry and edit the cross section everything disappears all right like your traditional models like your solid works everything in vector can't reference anything that's the downside to this mode in innovative mode you don't have this problem all right? everything's available to you at all the time so when you start designing it's always a good idea to understand which mode you want prefer if you're gonna have not too worried about having the reference data like that or be more constrained to working because you're building some sort of assembly that's gonna you want to update with maybe a couple of clicks maybe uh, solid uh, the structured part mode is the way you should go if you're looking to just design you're not really sure what's gonna happen you're not sure what changes are gonna happen uh, you want more freedom you don't want to be locked in and everything then you obviously want to be in innovative mode there's also a third mode which I call dynamic mode where you can get innovative mode to kind of act as a structured part mode. But that's a whole nother topic. Okay. Anyway, this is what I just wanted to show you here. I hope you find it useful.